Hello, my name is Derek Kinder. I'm a hydraulic engineer with the Risk Management Center. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the calibration of the reservoir routing model used in RMC RFA for the development of inflow volume based stage frequency curves. Let's get started. The objectives of this lecture are to discuss the calibration of the RMC RFA stage frequency curve to historic events. This includes examining the stage frequency curve and determine if adjustments need to be made to the discharge rating curve used in the reservoir routing. We will also briefly discuss various dam operations and methods to calibrate the discharge rating curve. We will then step through an example calibration for a project. Before running a full uncertainty simulation in RMC RFA, it is important to run a few preliminary calibration runs using the expected only option. The purpose of the calibration runs is to ensure the simulated stage frequency curve fits well with the empirical stage frequency curve derived previously in the empirical stage frequency analysis section. If the simulated stage frequency curve plots well compared to the observed data, then we will have more confidence in the estimated exceedance probabilities for much rarer flood events such as those that would cause overtopping. In this example, some adjustments should be made to the discharge rating curve used in the reservoir routing. This image shows how flood control dams typically operate during flood events. By examining operations during past events, you will be able to better understand how the project is typically operated. In many cases, the outflow is reduced to minimum flows during the rising limb of the hydrograph, to store flood water and minimize downstream flood damages. Outflows are typically increased when the pool reaches the top of flood pool, either due to flows through an uncontrolled spillway or by gate operations for a gated spillway, according to a set of spillway operating rule curves. There are several reservoir calibration methods for refining the discharge curve used in RMC RFA. Several techniques are discussed in detail in the RMC publication, Hydrologic Hazard Methodology for SQRAs. This document details how to develop a discharge rating curve by plotting the stage and discharge observed at a project. If a trend can be fitted within a reason, this could be used as a starting point for the curve. Another method discussed in the RMC publication is utilizing HEC HMS, or another hydrologic routing program, to develop a discharge curve which matches well to observed events. Another method is manually calibrating the model using water control manuals and historic events, which we will discuss on the next couple of slides. For this example calibration, we will look at Carlisle Dam located in southern Illinois. This structure is primarily for flood control and has four gates that regulate flow over the spillway. These gates are regularly loaded. For this project, we have 50 years of peak stage data, which can be seen on the empirical frequency curve on the right. For the first simulation, the maximum discharge capacity curve was used as the starting discharge curve for the RMC RFA model. The stage storage discharge curve was developed based on published rating curves for the project. This curve is expected to be lower than the observed points since we know the project would not release maximum discharge during a flood event. From the first run of the expected curve in RMC RFA, we can see that our assumption is correct and that the project does indeed store water during these events. Given this model, what is our estimate of the annual exceedance probability for the top of flood pool elevation of 462.5 feet? It is on the order of 4e to the minus 6, which is about 1 in 250,000. However, this estimate is likely incorrect and unconservative given the poor calibration of our model. Now we will look at the operations to try to get a better match to how the project actually operates. From this plot, we can see that there is a minimum pool elevation for the project. This is in the range of 443 to 445 feet, depending on the season. Below these elevations, the discharge is reduced to 50 CFS to maintain channel flow downstream. We can quickly apply this modification to the discharge curve. Now we can run the expected curve again to see if it lines up with the historic points. And we can see that it does. 
and now we need to keep working our way up the curve to match the other historic points. Looking back at the elevation release guide curve, we can see that the flow ranges from 4,000 CFS at elevation 445 to 10,000 CFS at elevation 462.5, which is also the top of flood control. These flows are the planned discharges for typical flood events, but deviations can be made for extreme inflow events, as can be seen from the spillway rule curve for the project. For large inflows, the project can have increasing discharge and gate openings. Since RMC RFA can only have one discharge curve, some iterations may be required to match the observed events. This can be seen in the next image of the expected curve, which uses the recommended usual guide curve varying from 4,000 CFS at elevation 445 to 10,000 CFS at elevation 462.5. Now we are getting close to matching the observed events. What we can tell from this plot is that above elevation 455, the discharges from the guide curve appear to be too low, resulting in peak stages that are actually higher than the observed events. We can do one more iteration by increasing the discharges between elevation 455 and 465 to better match the observed events. Above elevation 465, the spillway rule curve requires all spillway gates to be open so we can use the maximum discharge capacity rating curve above this elevation. Now we have a reservoir routing that agrees with the observed events, giving us more confidence in our model. Let's revisit our estimate of the annual exceedance probability for the top of flood pool elevation of 462.5. Given our calibrated model results, the estimate changed from about 4e to the minus 6 to about 8e to the minus 4. That is a change of more than two orders of magnitude, which could have a significant impact on a risk estimate. This is why it is important to calibrate the model to obtain good agreement with the observed events. Now let's look at calibration for another example project for Blakely Mountain Dam, which has an ungated or uncontrolled spillway. If we start by assuming the maximum discharge capacity for the regulating outlets, we can see that the stage frequency curve predicted by our model has poor agreement with the observed events. The reservoir model plot shows that releases during the rising portion of a typical flood event are practically zero when the stage is below the spillway crest. It is common for flood control dams to release minimum flows below the spillway crest during a flood event to maximize downstream benefits, and then release the stored flood water only after the peak of the event has passed. Therefore, a discharge of practically zero would be more appropriate in our model for elevations below the spillway crest. Even with practically zero outflow in the model, the observed stages still plot higher than the model results, especially in the most frequent events. This can be resolved by further modifying the stage discharge curve because the outflow can't be less than zero. The difference is due to regulation and operation of the project. The frequent annual maximum events are mostly due to the regulation based on seasonal guide curves and not due to flood events. For this type of situation, calibration can sometimes be improved by evaluating flood seasonality using annual maximum stages rather than flow. For this example, a flood seasonality based on stage was calculated using the largest 75% of the annual maximum stages for a total of 37 events. When this is done, there is an improvement. However, there is still a difference between the modeled curve and the observed events for the most frequent events. Since we are most interested in the infrequent flood events, these minor differences are acceptable. You should now have an understanding of calibration of the RMC RFA stage frequency curve to historic events.